Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the twelfth video in my playlist on regression. It is called Design of Experiments, Part 3 of 3. Previously, I had uploaded these other 10 videos on regression. Now, there are others 11 videos on regression. There were two on correlation and covariance, five videos on regression itself, one video comparing ANOVA to regression, and one on residuals, which are the errors in the regression model, and the first two of three on Design of Experiments, the DOE which is the discipline used to validate regression models. Since this part three video builds on the part two video, let's review the keys to understanding from part two. Those keys summarize what we covered in that part two video. The first key to understanding from part two said, the estimated effect of a factor x sub i is e sub i equals the average of the y's and runs where x sub i was high minus the average of the y's and runs where x sub i was low. Key to understanding number two said the negative one and plus one coded level notation is more than just a shorthand. These values can be multiplied to provide a formula for estimated effect of a factor or interaction. KTU number three said an interaction is present when the two levels of a factor react differently to a change in the level of another factor. And finally, KTU number four from DOE part two said, to calculate the coded level of an interaction, AB, for a given run, multiply the coded level of A by the coded level of B. Okay, now let's go forward with this video, Design of Experiments part three of three. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding, and this will end with the overall picture of the concept on a single page. And then we'll go into detailed explanation of each of the keys. For this video, there are six keys. The first key to understanding for part three says, full factorial designs test all possible combinations of factors and their levels. They yield the best information on the effects of all factors and all possible interactions, but they can be prohibitively expensive. KTU number two says, fractional factorial designs test fewer combinations and can provide acceptable rigor. Key number three says, DOE screening experiments are resolution three or four experiments designed to tell us which factors are most significant. The fourth key to understanding says, next, full factor, factorial or fractional factorial experiments are designed and conducted using just the most significant factors which were identified in the screening experiments. The focus is on interactions as well as main effects. The fifth key to understanding says, for nuisance factors and unknown factors, block, that is group, what you can and randomize what you can't. The sixth and final key to understanding says, analyze the data and confirm the DOE results. And here on one page are the six keys to understanding for DOE part three. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, now let's go back to the top and take a closer look at each of these keys to understanding. Key to understanding number one says, full factorial designs test all possible combinations of factors and their levels. They yield the best information on the effects of all factors and all possible interactions, but they can be prohibitively expensive. In most DOA experiments, only two levels, high and low, are tested. If k is the number of factors, 
then there are two to the power of k different combinations. A two to the power of k design is called a full factorial design. In part one, the first step was to identify six or more possible factors to be evaluated. Six factors would yield two to the power of six or 64 combinations to be tested. And each combination would be tested with several replications. That many runs would give us the needed information to analyze all factors and all possible interactions. There would be two level interactions such as, such as AB, three level interactions like ABC, all the way up to six level interactions like ABCDEF. However, performing that many runs would often be prohibitively expensive or otherwise impractical. KTU number two says fractional factorial designs test fewer combinations and can provide acceptable rigor. If a full factorial design has two to the power of k combinations, then a fractional factorial design has a fraction of that, that is two to the, to the power of k minus p combinations. For our simple example, let's have k equal three, indicating three factors, and p equal one. So we'll have two to the power of three minus minus one combinations, that is two to the power of two, which is four, instead of two to the power of three, which would be eight. We start with a full factorial table to the left of coded levels for k, equal, k minus one equals two of our three factors. We can call the factors a and b, or x sub one and x sub two. With two factors, we have four combinations and four runs. We start with a full factorial table of coded levels for k minus one factors, that is with two of our three factors. We can call the factors a and b, or we could call them x sub one and x sub two. With two factors, we have four combinations and four runs. Step three, is to relabel the interaction column as the column for the third factor, C, mixed up with or confounded with the interaction of A and B. So we're using the design calculated for the interaction column in testing for the third factor. This fractional testing design has four runs for three factors instead of the eight runs which the full factorial design would have. This would be acceptable so long as we have reason to believe that the effect on the interaction is not statistically significant. Not infrequently, two-level inter interactions have significant effects, and these can be very useful in explaining apparently strange process outcomes. Significant three-level interactions are comparatively rare, and there is some difference in opinion regarding significance four level, significant four-level interactions. That is, are they so exceedingly rare as to be ignored? But uh, it seems everyone agrees that five or more level interactions are not worth considering. Considering KTU number three says DOE screening experiments are resolution two or four experiments designed to tell us which factors are most significant. In part one, we said that the first step was to use subject matter expertise to identify all possible or reasonably plausible factors, six to eight or more of these. We would like to save our time and budget focusing on the critical few factors with the most impact. So step two is to use a screening experiment to screen out factors that are not statistically significant or which have the least significance. So we don't need as high a resolution experiment as we will later, as we will later in resolution. Resolution three or resolution, resolution four is sufficient. Resolution measures the extent to which the estimated many main effects are confounded with interactions. In resolution three, we have one plus two, main effect one confounded with two fact interactions. In resolution four, we have one plus three or two plus two, <clears throat> which is the main effect one confounded with three fact interactions and two factor interactions confounded with other two factor interactions. Statistical software can serve, a, serve up a choice of design options of various 
resolutions for us. Terminology note, two-factor and three-factor, etc. interactions are sometimes called second-order and third-order, etc. interactions. In the ANOVA table output from the screening experiment, a factor with p less than or equal to alpha, alpha is most commonly selected to be 0 0.05, has a statistically significant effect on the response y. We'll screen out those that don't. In the table above, A, detergent, and B, water temperature, have statistically significant effects. C, the washing machine brand, does not. So we would keep factors A and B and proceed without C. ANOVA is used to apportion the variation contributed by each factor and in interaction. The sum of squares, SS column, indicates the relative magnitude of the effect of each factor on the response. We may want to proceed with just the top two or three significant factors if there is a sizable gap in the sum of squares between these and the others. In this example, we only have two significant factors, A and B, so we don't need to use the SS for screening purposes. <clears throat> Excuse me. A Pareto chart can also be used to determine which factors survive the screening experiment and move on to the next step. If none of the factors have P less than or equal to alpha, then the original list may not have included factors that had a significant influence and or the levels were not sufficiently separated to result in a difference in Y. KTU number five says, next, full factorial or fractional factorial experiments are designed and conducted using just the most significant factors which were identified in the screening experiments. The focus is on interactions as well as main offense. In a screening experiment, we ignore interactions, but interactions can have a very important effects on, on responses. So our next set of experiments will focus on both interactions and main effects. Earlier, we said there were two to the three or eight possible combinations for levels for two levels of three factors. A full factorial experiment tests all poss possible combinations. For two, level, for two levels of k factors, there are two to the power of k possible combinations. If we tested all of them, we would have a full factorial design. Screening experiments are often called fractional factorial experiments, which fully test fewer than k, two to the k combinations. If time and budget permit, at this stage, we would perform a full factorial experiment with the factors selected in the screening experiment. If we used our screening experiment to reduce the number of significant factors to three or two, we are more likely to be able to full afford the full factorial number of runs. With four or five or more factors at this point, budget and time constraints could require a fractional factorial design. The statistics software can calculate the resolution for various options. We select the option which, with which we are comfortable based on the following definitions. Resolution 4, that is 1 plus 3 or 2 plus 2, main effects confounded with three-factor interactions. Significant three-factor interactions are fairly rare, so this may be okay for some experiments. And two-factor interactions are confounded with other two-factor interactions. Resolution 5. That is 1 plus 4, or 2 plus 3, or 3 plus 2. Main effects are confounded with four-factor interactions. Significant four-factor interac interactions are almost unheard of, so this resolution should be fine for almost all purposes. Two-factor interactions confounded with three-factor interactions, and three-factor interactions confounded with two-factor interactions. Resolution 6 is main effect confounded with five factor interactions. This is overkill. Stick with resolution 5. Or since this is the only possible, this is only possible with five or more factors, use your screening experiment to select the top five significant factors. KTU number five says, for nuisance factors and unknown factors, block, that is group what you can, and randomize what you can't. A nuisance factor is one outside the process. This is also known as a special cause of variation. <clears throat> if 
For example, the ambient temperature of a factory can increase steadily as the day goes on. For some processes, this can affect the results, the Y values. Uh, see my video, Control Charts, Part 1, for more on special cause variation. A known nuisance factor can often be blocked. To block in this concept, concept, context means to group into blocks. By doing so, we try to remove the effect of variation of the nuisance factor. In this example, we block the effect of the daily rise in ambient temperature by performing all our experimental runs within a narrow block of time. And if it takes several days to complete all the runs, we do them all at the same time of day and the same ambient temperature. We thus minimize the variation in the nuisance factor ambient temperature. That minimizes the variation in Y caused by the nuisance factor. There can also be factors affecting Y which we don't know about. Obviously we can't block what we don't know, but we can often, often avoid the influence of unknown factors, also known as lurking variables, by randomizing the order in which the experimental combinations are tested. For example, unbeknownst to us, the worker performing the steps in an experiment may get tired over time. Or conversely, the worker might get in a groove and perform better over time. So we need to randomize the order in which we test the combinations. Statistical software can provide us with the random sequences to use in the experiment. Key number five says, analyze the data and confirm the results. I'm sorry, key number six says, analyze the data and confirm the dealer results. As we said in the part one article, that a full coverage of DOE is beyond the scope of this book. That certainly holds for some of the analysis uh, of the results of experiments. Here are some of the things that should be done. Use sub subject matter knowledge experts in addition to the statistical tools. Here are some things that should be done with the data and results. Find the statistically significant factors and in interactions with P less than or equal to alpha. Rerun the analysis with only these statistically significant effects. Analyze all the data and graphs produced by the software. Look for anomalies, time order effects, etc. Create a regression model from the data. R squared should be high. Residual plots from the regression model should normally be should be normally distributed around zero. And find the optimal settings of the factors. Run several tests on the optimal settings to confirm the results. The regression model can only be proven valid if it correctly predicts future results. Okay, that concludes our video on DOE part three. Here are the others in the playlist on regression. Those videos are on my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified and more are planned. See statisticsfromazcom slash videos for the latest status of videos completed and planned. If you liked this video, please remember to give it a, a like on YouTube and I'll be making more videos of some of these uh, or, or most of the 60 plus concepts in the go book if folks like you tell me the more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazcom has, has a listing of available unplanned videos. Now videos like this one can be very helpful but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. You can also take a look at my, bl my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog, and I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at StatsA to Z.